It's OK Football's Champ Chat, where we round up everything that's gone on in the greatest league in the world, the Championship. Uh, the greatest league in the world, Ollie, is the Spartan South Midlands Premier Division. So <laughs> it's the second greatest league in the world, just to be clear. <laughs> Hi, everyone. <laughs> well, with me are my co-hosts. I got Beefy, I got Phil, I got producer Matt. And unfortunately, because this is recorded on a Sunday, we don't have the Bristol City versus Cardiff result or anything like that. I think but we know what it's going to be, though, don't we? <laughs> Well, Cardiff turned a corner, but we can <laughs> discuss. We can, yeah, we can. We, yeah, we, we, can <laughs> we can discuss the fact that the winner gets the right to the seven crossing. <laughs> <laughs> so, do Cardiff want to stay in, or do Bristol want to cross? That's the question. And I think the the loser gets thrown into the the sea or whatever body They've of water is underneath th the river. Fr thrown into the River Severn because... Oh, it's the it, River Severn. I should have... Yeah. The, the clue's in the yeah. name. It's, it's an English river, right? So it's literally just full of shit. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, I guess that's how we see it going, right? So uh, let, let's chat about the games that we do know about. Let's start up with Sunderland 2 leads 2. And that was a right ding-dong of a game. Uh, I think we actually saw goal of the season... Uh, the equaliser in the 97th yeah. minute. It's like, Alan Brown, wow, right? It, it was something of the season. I don't know about goal of the season. It, it I think it was, um, at first and foremost, it was a good game. I enjoyed watching great it. Game. It was a really, really good game. I thought that Sunderland came out of the traps really, really quickly. And then once Leeds sort of got their number, they, they took over a lot of, a lot of the possession in the, at the back end of the first half. Um, and then they took the lead through Furpa. What th I think the thing that stood out for me, other than them, glaring error at the end was uh, was how good Willie Nonto is. Um, He's levels assists. above this, yeah, this league. Yeah, yeah. I mean, so it, his first assist was one of those ones where you whip it in with such pace. As, as long as it hits a head, it's going in. And it mm. happened um, to, to land on Piru's head and it was an absolutely great goal. And then he had the intelligence not to be greedy in the 18-yard box and lay off um, to Junior Furpo. So, um, yeah, props to, to Willie Nonto because I thought he was fantastic. But the... The, the, it culminated in one of the biggest ricks I've seen on a football pitch. It was it was unbelievable. I mean, I was watching it and uh, messaging a friend of mine who's a Leeds fan, and just going, "No, no, <laughs> <laughs> you wouldn't believe what was just seen." He was asking for updates because he wasn't able to watch it, and I was like, "I, c I can't." explain to you just how bad and th there's been people saying that it took a funny spin and it might have hit a hit divot and took a funny spin um but i think that what leeds fans might find really difficult is that first and foremost Melly is a fantastic goalkeeper yeah. right and it would have been heartbreaking to lose two points in that particular fashion and he looked upset when he was with his own teammates and then he just had a laugh yeah with, 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 with Labrie. Yeah, yeah i know he knows yeah. him i know yeah. that he's, wor he's worked with him in the past but the last thing doesn't look good does it? the, the, yeah. the very last thing when you're absolutely livid is to see the guy who's just cost you two points laughing with the opposition yeah. manager i thought that was oh, it was a bit dodgy that one every goalkeeper in the professional game will have a moment like that and you're lucky if it happens uh, you know, in the first round of the Carabao Cup and nobody notices or cares. You're really unlucky if it happens when you're prime Friday night billion <laughs> and, you're, and you're two one up yeah. um, in the 97th minute. It's just a nightmare and there's nothing he can do about that. And he's going to feel like, uh, you know, he, yeah, he was laughing probably to try and make himself feel better. He's going to feel he like a, absolute shit his, afterwards. Yeah, he was a mate of his. I yeah. don't think there's any, any malice in it. He was, nah. obviously, he was obviously gutted, but when the cameras pan to that, that's the last thing you want to yeah. see. Yeah. You just come back from your head in your hands and you look up and go, are you having a laugh? <laughs> 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 oh, it was so brutal. It, so brutal. brutal, but I have to say, Sunderland's, you know, they've Sunderland shut me up. Well. Yeah, they've yeah. shut me Sunderland up. Like I good. was saying, they'll they'll be contesting in the playoffs. But if they keep going like this, well, we we're getting good for you know top two possibly. We're getting to the point on the OK Football Show where we just need to have a separate apology show every week, <laughs> where <laughs> where Ollie apologises to various fan bases for doubt ever doubting them. And Sheffield United are up there now, and Sunderland are up there now. They they look really hot this year. Yeah, yeah. Like very tidy team. Um, we'll, we'll see how the season progresses. Right on to Burnley nil, Preston nil. It was a feisty. It was a good nil. Lancashire nil. derby. Yeah. yeah. No one got bitten. Yeah, no one got bitten, <laughs> but there was a fight that broke <laughs> yeah. out. 
I mean, it tip, tip, like you say, <coughs> typically feisty. Um, and I think that there was a couple of major incidents that, it, even though it was a nil-nil, you, and you might not think that much happened, a lot did. Um, Preston had a good goal and a really, really well worked goal, um, cancelled out from mm. a, a wrong offside decision. Yep. Uh, Emil Reese had a, a wonderful right foot strike into the bottom corner, um, and yeah, that was in the first half, I believe, and it, it, it would have changed the entire game. But equally, I think. Most would argue that there was a penalty um, for Burnley. Um, so it could have still been a draw. I know that Burnley fans are, some of them are okay. Some of them are, are, are not so happy. I think it's a situation where they know that they're in a good position. They know that they can push on. Um, but at the moment, the games just aren't quite clicking. And I know that um, pre-match, there was a lot of build-up on Sky Sports yesterday about the, the the changes in style of play between companies Burnley in the championship and Scott Parker's Burnley in the championship. And um, there's been a lot more sort of like fast break goals, whereas company it was a case of building up from the back, etc. Um, but the reality of it is, is that they're still a very, very good team and, and not many people will turn them over. So I think it will yeah. probably come good um, for Burnley. I think that they'll, they'll be well I'll fancied I moving forward. I wouldn't be stressed about it now if I was a Burnley fan. No, not I'd at all. I'd be so thinking I'm in a good place for the second half. Yeah. They're probably sitting there going, yeah, these bunch of little yeah. fans. <laughs> yeah, what do <laughs> they know? Have a look at yourselves. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone always brings up the fact that we are losing town fans. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah, how can, how dare you have opinions on other teams? Like, we just, we watch it, you know, why not? And on to Norwich 4, Hull 0. And I said to Hull fans that these were games, they, they won three in a row. They were games that they should have won. Because realistically, what it was Stoke for new manager bounce before mm -hmm. Pelakachi got his feet under the table. Then it was Cardiff, and then QPR, who are, you know, at the solid, <laughs> solid as a rock that sunk into a river. Well, um, let, let's think about some of the teams they've beaten this year, <laughs> yeah. QPR, yeah. <laughs> including Luton. Yeah, <laughs> just just yeah. the one fairly one easily. One. Yeah, yeah, I know it, it's absolutely shambolic, isn't it? But Norwich are on fire. Hull had a go. But realistically, Norwich started the game like a freight train, and there was, there was only one winner. What value that game was, and it could have been six all, seven all. It was absolutely bonkers. Um, who's that fellow who scored the second one for Norwich? Is it out? Sergeant no. was second, didn't he? Oh, yeah, Sergeant, Sergeant was the second. second. Borgia Saints, Borgia Borgia got, got the end. He, he got yeah. the last one, but the was it? Al, is it Alvarez? Nunes. Nunes. Nunes, absolutely cracking yeah. goal. Uh, Norwich just looked unbelievably good. They took their chances and they could have had another couple more. But Hull down the other end, you know, pretty wasteful, I thought. Like, and they could have been on the board and it could have been close and it wasn't. And so the scoreline flatters Norwich a bit on this one. But, it, you know, Sargent again, one assist, one goal, absolutely quality, that lad. One missed penalty. But still. Yeah, yeah well. <laughs> yeah, well yeah. That, that's how you turn around a slow start to the season. You know, like everyone was saying at the beginning of the season, oh, Norwich, uh, you know, a little bit slow, bit of a slow, pedantic start, but you know uh, what? Bam. Yeah, like they were just warming up. This league more than any other is about consistency, and if they start turning in performances like that every week, they'll be up in the playoffs. I don't want to talk about missed penalties either, so I had a six-fold yesterday, <laughs> and one result let me down at 14-1, to one, um, Everton Newcastle, and mm -hmm. I, I had Newcastle, Ooh, and Anthony Gordon, Gordon missed a penalty. Yeah. So I'm right into him. To give me the two pound fifty, I would have won. So <laughs> well, that, that, that can lead yeah. to a dear Mr. Gordon. <laughs> yeah, that, that please look out down the back of your sofa. <laughs> yeah, that that can lead to a uh, conversation about mental health. Actually, and I just wanted to bring it up with regards to the Norwich game because yesterday they had um, an unsilenced minute, um, and I know that sometimes um, things can seem like a very small thing that might not get any reach but if that helps even one person um yesterday i th think that norwich are really leading the way with some of their their work on mental health yeah their, their video last year was just yeah, excellent spot on. So, so what happened what what so was essentially it? the referee blew for a minute uh, like you would if you were to have a minute silence but he was proactively sort of encouraged that you would speak to your neighbor at the state at the stadium uh, and the teams were in a huddle and it was uh, it was literally a case of unsilence yourself and have a chat so i thought it was a really really good message and i think that norwich deserves yeah. props for that that, that feels wonderful. like something that 
that could really be league wide. You know, yeah, that would be an excellent be. idea. Should be, yeah. And Luton, the people that I sit next to, they don't want me talking to them for up again. <laughs> <laughs> so. That's I a personal <laughs> thing. Only bad luck. Yeah, has <laughs> <laughs> something to do with the show, I think. <laughs> um, I think the the key thing as well is that people know who to call. So you know, you can always call your mates, but you can always call your friends. But you can also call the Samaritans. They were sponsored by Samaritans. Yeah, a- a- yeah. any time. Very good. Twenty four hours a day, just call if you need to call. Yeah. Right, on to Portsmouth 1, Oxford 1. Oxford still looking for their first away win of the season and Portsmouth looking for their first win of the season. But I have to say, Portsmouth looked great in this one and uh, it's a relatively late equaliser for Oxford, uh, but they should be happy with a point and fair play Oxford continuing to look pretty tidy. Fair play producer Matt for calling Oxford at the start of the season as a dark horse. Did you watch this one? I didn't get to see this one actually. No, but they they were decent. I thought that um, that Portsmouth look, looked as good as they have done. Mm-hmm. Um, and but the thing is with Oxford, as we found out to our own detriment as Luton fans on Tuesday, is that they do not stop. They and do not got give a up. Bunch of really energetic, ratty, mm-hmm. and I mean that in a good way. But they've got <laughs> a lot of energetic, ratty players that want to win. Um, and uh, like they've got dangerous players. I mean. He was he was described to have come on by uh, the Luton Town um, announcer the other day, but Louis Sibley mm. actually <laughs> came on. He yesterday. didn't come on. Yeah, um, <laughs> I, I was thinking. I was thinking that um, doesn't look like Louis Sibley. <laughs> yeah. um, and he scored a goal, and, and ultimately as well, the the Oxford goalkeeper made a great save from a penalty as well. So Oxford will go away from that um, that game with a point and and think, yep, I think that's probably fair yeah. enough on balance. <coughs> yeah. Fair play. And on to Coventry 1, Sheffield Wednesday 2. Two goals in added time for Sheffield Wednesday, added time in the first half, and then a winner in the 93rd minute. And Coventry barely threatened in the first half. Second half, I don't know how they didn't put the game out of reach before Sheffield Wednesday bagged their second. I thought Cov had turned a corner, to be honest, after that midweek win. But fair play, Sheffield Wednesday. And considering they're starting to look more comfortable in the championship, would you say they are on a roll? A Danny roll? Oh, jeez. But a bump. That's it. Cut the show. I'm done. (laughs) I'm not. um, There's a joke in here, too. Yeah, there's a joke in here, too. Um, How long has Mark Robbins got a job for? That's the question. Uh, I'm looking forward to El Sacchio coming up. (laughs) Luton versus Coventry. Um, So... (laughs) We had a comment from a Coventry fan two weeks ago when we did this, and his view is, this is uh, Callan1177, that actually the majority of the fans are behind Robin still, and talk of Robin's losing his job is premature. But I, I just feel like people are so quick with the trigger finger these days that Robin's is genuinely at risk. Yeah, well, I, I, d- I don't think he's at risk, though. I, know, I think it's a completely different situation from Rob Edwards at Luton. He's got longevity on his side as well. Yeah. Like he's been there for a long old time. Um, and ultimately, it's, it's, one of those, it's an enigma for, for the way that things are going for Coventry at the minute because I think a lot of people, when you looked at the start of the season, would have looked at their business and looked at how they just generally have been over the last few years and thought they're on their way up. They're, they'll, they'll be at least in the playoff areas. But it's just not quite clicking. And, not and, and it'll be interesting to, to sort of see if any, if any Coventry fans do comment because... Outwardly, when you're only watching a highlights package, you can sort of see that there's difficulties, but it, uh, I wonder if the vibe is different um, from watching the whole game. Well, I'm not sure. And I think we, we've all talked about Hadji Wright as just absolute quality, but there mm. seems to be a fear amongst Coventry fans on Reddit that actually he isn't putting in a full stint for the club. And, oh, and right. they're, not, they're not happy with his performances. You know, he struggles to stay on side. Um, he's lazy off the ball, that sort of thing. So it'd be really interesting to hear from Coventry fans whether that is a universally held view. Because when you watch highlights, Hadji Wright looks unstoppable, yeah, yeah. you know? Yeah, he looked really, really good. Like, I think, obviously, the highlights did kind of take away a bit, maybe, from what Sheffield Wednesday did in that game. Because it seemed to be just like a Coventry reel. Of highlights of they just they do did. the attacks, and yeah, Coventry exactly. had a lot of attacks. They did, yeah. Uh, yeah. But no, I think Sheffield Wednesday played the game really well. Mm-hmm. Uh, they they did earn the win, very rightfully. Yeah, and just a word on Sheffield Wednesday. That's unbeaten in three now. Mm. Like, fair play, Danny Roll. Yeah. They no. shouldn't have lost against us. Should not have lost no, against us. No, and th- they, they had two back-to-back games, which is awful. 
we, a we do plan. little weekend trips with the kids where we'll go up to a city in England and just hang out for the weekend. And one of my favourites was Sheffield. Like really, really nice, completely against expectations because I, I didn't know what it was going to be like going in, but I thought it was going to be a bit grim. Actually, lovely city. I would love to be there for a Sheffield derby mm-hmm. this year. I really would love to be in that stadium just to feel what it's like. E- either way round, you know. Um, I, I think Hillsborough's got a bit more of the history, so I'd, I'd probably like to visit there. I doubt I'd get a ticket, but I'd, I'd love to watch that game live, not on TV. Yeah. Well, fair play. On to Derby 2, QPR nil. QPR have one win this season. <laughs> and when did that come? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it came against Luton. And they look fantastic there. So much yeah, so it's, it's sort of made us... We made them they're, look they're like incredible. heroes, didn't yeah. we? Yeah. Uh, yeah, but they, they, they struggle elsewhere. Quick fire goals from Derby here. They're pretty much... They had all the good chances. And they're starting to look like they, they belong in the championship. Like, yeah. I withdraw all my pre-season thoughts about save Derby. it for the apology show okay, okay I'll save it <laughs> the, I'm we- the sorry. weekly apology show yeah <laughs> their, their goals were excellent by the mm. way I don't know if you guys have seen them but the header must have been from a full sort of it 16 yards yeah. out it fantastic was how right on earth do you get the power on yeah, that I mean, yeah I mean what a goal and it was one of those ones where I was watching the, the highlights and I was looking at that thing still saying Oh, what a great header. I can't <laughs> wait to talk about that tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. And then the next goal, you see, that's been pinged into the top right, uh, top left-hand corner as well. A um, couple of wonderful, wonderful goals. And, um, yeah, I, I, th- I think it's one of those ones you just have to say, like, fair play to Derby. I'm looking forward to the away trip up there. I've not been to, to Derby away yet. So um, that'll, that'll be a good experience because it looked like it was absolutely rocking yesterday. And QPR are, um, I find things difficult. Um, but... Um, yeah, we'll, we'll see how, how things go for them. But yeah, fair play to Derby. And like I say, thank you for the two excellent goals yesterday. Yeah, they, yeah. They, they were that, that's how you take a corner. That is a corner routine to yeah. the back post. Yeah. Ridiculous, that yeah. header. Just great. Yeah. Well, QPR, like, you know, based off seeing them in the flesh of Luton, I thought, you know, they were warriors, never yeah. give up. But it's just not clicking for them now. No, it's not. And maybe everyone's going to click against Luton this year. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> other than Luton, <laughs> <laughs> like, Luton you're, you're guaranteed six points. <laughs> have, have you lost five games on the trot? <laughs> you need to play Luton. <laughs> you haven't scored in twelve games. Don't Break worry, your duck. Yeah. You're playing Luton. <laughs> Don't worry, our centre half and left back are going to stare at each other while you wander through the middle. Yeah. It's pretty abject. We'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, Plymouth two, Blackburn one. Plymouth for home park. They're starting to look pretty tasty, aren't they? Um, Morgan could, could Whitaker in the 97th minute, and fan like Plymouth fans were starting to say, "All should have been Whittaker. five, though. It should have been five. You know, um, they had the chances. I knew Blackburn were going to drop off, um, but Wayne Rooney didn't see <laughs> this because <laughs> <No. laughs> he got sent <laughs> off. He got sent off in the 87th minute. Plymouth look so good. They look yeah, so they good. Do. I do wonder if it was a case of Blackburn not looking good in this one. No, but they were always going to revert to the mean. Like, that's what Blackburn do. Is they start really well. They have a striker that scores 30, 40, 50 goals a season. <laughs> and they still end up battling relegation. I, I that's what they like, do. I felt like it was a bit easy for Plymouth to just kind of run through them yesterday. That was, that was the feeling. <laughs> I've seen I that got. before as well. <laughs> <laughs> well <laughs> yeah. All the PTSD. There were, there were parallels of Luton. Uh, but no, I, I felt Blackburn definitely didn't get enough opportunities to score themselves like they have been in their previous games so maybe something's happening to them as well but yeah Plymouth looked really good in that game yeah uh, do you know what I really am happy it's coming good for Wayne Rooney I don't know why because I've, I've got you know <laughs> it's I one of the greatest English talents of all passion. well yeah yeah still he, getting sent off good on yeah, him yeah uh, like, absolutely a fight, it's, it's a, a throwback isn't it because I love managers that look like Henry VIII <laughs> <laughs> but it, it would be really easy for him just not to take another managerial job. It hasn't yeah. done well. He clearly doesn't need the money, but he's doing it because he loves football. And you could genuinely tell that. You can and genuinely they love tell. They, they like, do, I, yeah. I was down there for the Plymouth versus Luton game, and they're all singing, Rooney, Rooney. And it's, you see it yesterday. And I, I have to say that um, Home Park, I, I did enjoy Home Park. Um, I thought that the the from the away end where you just see an entire arena just go woof yep. um, when they score I, I, like they, they absolutely love it down there and I think yeah a fair play to them their home form will be 
obviously very important. I think that first things first, um, even the even the Plymouth fans will will say we need to get over 50, 55 points first and then see where the, see see where the season yeah. takes us. But if they carry on with the form that they've got um, at home, then then job's good and I think they'll be well, fine. Um, what's, what's your mission when you bring Rudy in, stay up? Yeah. That's it. Mm. So and build. Could, and yeah. build from there. And from there. But number one job is stay up and so far they look like they could do it. And I think that he, he was a baller. <laughs> he, like a proper street footballer that yep. made it into a professional football. And, and you've got to say... I really hope that he gets the opportunity to be safe and then we start seeing how he can build a team and play good football. I really hope that. For can you him. imagine if he becomes one of the greatest managers of all time? He's still young. You know what? He's, just yeah. uh, he's actually younger than <coughs> Cristiano Ronaldo. Can yeah. you believe it? Looking at the two he's of our them. age. <laughs> yeah, he's our age. <laughs> he's so young. So young. <laughs> right, on to Sheffield United 2, Luton 0. It could have been way more than 2-0. Um, I wouldn't say it was a very one-sided game. Luton looked absolutely fantastic in this one. No. <laughs> <laughs> so let, let's track this. We played our right back at left back, our centre back at right back, our central midfielder at centre forward, He's and our left back man. at right midfield. Mm -hmm. uh, and it was just the most confused. Do you know, I don't, were any of you Sunday league footballers? I, I, I was, yeah, I played uh, played so for a local you, town. So do you remember there would always be that one lad who turned up absolutely stinking of the night before? <laughs> that was, that <laughs> was me. smelled like a brewery, Yeah, that right? was me. And you'd and end up cousin, marking yeah. him and getting drunk off the fumes. <laughs> oh, <laughs> looked, <laughs> so Luton, Luton looked like 11 drunk Sunday league footballers who had <laughs> never played a match together. What on earth was it? I, and it, Sheffield United, absolutely quality, by the way. There's some fantastic players there. But... That they couldn't have had an easier ride than they did yesterday. We made them look like peak Pep Guardiola, Barcelona. Mm. It was I, ridiculous. I, um, I, a few weeks ago, I got some comments on this uh, particular podcast um, from Sheffield United fans after their game against Hull. Um, and maybe I was a little bit um, bit naive because I think that when you listen to how Wilder spoke in his, in his post-match, he knows that this is a marathon of a season. And the reality of it is, is that they didn't need to get out of second gear yesterday. Nope. They absolutely schooled Luton and Raksaki was fantastic. They He's rested quality, isn't he? They rested Hamer. They didn't even need their star player on no. uh, to, to, to start. They had uh, Burrows on the bench as well. So all the players that um, I was fearful of Luton having to come up against, they weren't even there. And they're, st and they're starting 11 and the fact that they were able to rotate and they had... I mean, they've just played a wonderful game. And like I said, I, I want to go on the record and say that fair play, I was obviously misguided um, from, from speaking about that game previously because it feels like Wilder's aware that actually the season is a long one and if you don't need to expend energy and you're 2-0 up, then crack well, on. Well, we had a couple of comments two weeks ago from Sheffield United fans who said they didn't want Wilder back when he came back. But actually now they're the ones eating humble pie because he's turned it around and they look like an automatic promotion candidate. Mm. They really do. Mm. Yeah. Looking very good. Well, you know, he, he was really close, really close to the Luton job. And then Rob Edwards come in, he dazzles, flashes the pearly whites, says the right things, they got the job. But we're not bitter. We're not, <laughs> we're not bitter. <laughs> we weren't, but we're getting there. Yeah, yeah. It's because everyone was laughing at Chris Wilder. He's obviously a good manager. And I apologise, Sheffield United fans, when I said Wilder was the only thing holding you back. In all fairness, you were uh, in mitigation, in mitigation, would, I'll say, were Luton really bad or were Sheffield United oh, really, both. really it good? Could have been 6 0. Yeah. Yeah. Could have been 6 0. Yeah. Yeah. They hit the post yeah. as well. It, it, like looked, it, it looked like a third round FA Cup tie where like your plucky minnows from the National League South have made it through against Man City. That's what it looked like. It was bad. Couldn't get but out boy, of our own Boys half. v men. 19 touches in the opposition half in the second in the first half. Absolutely disgraceful. Disgraceful performance from Luton Town. Where do we go? Where where do they go from here, producer Matt? League One. <laughs> yeah. It feels feels like League One. Yeah. I think mm. if we don't do a reset after this international break, I I can't see us getting anything out of the next ten fixtures. Yes. <laughs> it's a horrible <laughs> it's run a after the run. international for break. Thirty for points yeah. on offer. It's all gone Pete Tong for Rob Edwards. At least he's super handsome. Right, on to Swansea nil, Stoke nil. Um, 
No back-to-back win for Stoke and Nicholas Pella, who uh, isn't a goalkeeping coach. I retract my statement. Domination from Swansea, though. No idea how, they, how it wasn't a win. Uh, Johansson yeah, because of Johansson. was fantastic. Yeah, I mean, um, Stoke, obviously, off the back of a, of a 6-1 smashing midweek. Yeah. Or, where where or, was Tom Cannon? Pick. Yeah, well, this is the thing. He had a couple of one-on-ones, didn't he? And he just didn't did, didn't take them. And like you say, Johansson was, was in fine form. And again, I was speaking to, um, to Jimmy from the Blades Ramble midweek um, in regards to the Luton game, and he was saying that Swansea were decent like they they put up a really good fight and um swan uh, swansea scored an own goal which meant that that the sheffield united took the three points but he was quite impressed by how swansea had been so um yeah it's it's one of those ones where they'll probably look at that game and think oh it's a home game um stoke were nothing like they were in midweek and we should have taken three points but um like i say if a keeper's on it sometimes you just have one of those days don't you and if he's absolutely on it he's absolutely on it imagine turning up for a game against sheffield united i wonder what that's like (laughs) <laughs> right on to <laughs> Watford <laughs> two, Middlesbrough <laughs> one. Like I genuinely thought Middlesbrough were, you know, they had to win. They were dominant, but their inability to score is quite alarming. They create so much. I don't know what's happened to Latte Laugh. I don't know no. what's happened to their forwards. They cannot They're score. They're offside <laughs> all They're the offside. time. Yeah. Latte, Latte, Latte Lad scored a scored a goal that, but he wa- I mean, it was blatantly offside as well, by the way. But yeah. when he got through, he, he he put it in. But yeah, it's it's one of those ones where I I had um, Middlesbrough down for the win because when you put the context of the midweek fixtures again, Watford went up to Preston and and got turned over pretty badly. So um, what a turnaround! What a turnaround! An absolutely fair play for the reaction because the one the one thing that you want when you've come off of an away day trip and you've lost is a genuine reaction and mm. you saw that I mean there would have been fans I'm sure that are in the stadium that are thinking hang on a minute this is another loss um, like Middlesbrough after 75 minutes was still 1-0 up but fair play to them because um, I thought that the goal the first goal from Kiembe was a great strike and then the second goal uh, from Barr who came off the bench uh, was an absolutely wonderful volley uh, really really good and you, you, you've got to say that they're, they're, they'll be looking forward now to their next fixture which is a, it's the M1 derby against Luton and they'll be absolutely rubbing their hands they, they won't be able to wait to, to players and they'll probably thinking uh, they're that's a shame that there is an international break because they would have loved to have played us straight away. But um, yeah, it's going to be feisty one and it's probably going to be a case of form versus heart. I'm not saying that Watford won't have any heart, but that's all that Luton have got to rely on at the minute. That's <laughs> so, it, yeah. so it'll be a case of <laughs> hoping yep. that um, hoping that the that they turn up from a Luton's perspective. But yeah, you can't say fairer than that. Watford are, Watford are up in the playoff places. And, uh, and, and, and the the they've season. got three points coming straight after the international break yeah. against Luton. <laughs> oh, stop being so negative. <laughs> <laughs> right. On to West Brom, nil, Millwall, nil. It's so much pressure from West Brom, but they couldn't carve out the big chances. In fact, Millwall actually had the better of they the did. chances. Palmer, the West Brom keeper, he was the busier of the two. And um, it's a little wobble for Carlos Corbrand's West Brom. Three <laughs> games, no wins, Good point for Millwall. They came and they took the point back to Bermondsey. You didn't have to ask them twice. I think this is a minor setback for West Brom. They'll be back. Mm. Um, It feels like a really well-run club now. Some absolutely outrageous cheap signings that have done really well. And, you know, we have West Brom fans who watch this and they know how much I'm backing West Brom this year. Well, so no, th- no, don't, don't let me down. They, they don't know you're backing them because that pod never saw the light yeah, but of I've day. Yeah, t- I've talked about it every week because <laughs> I was re- really smug about them being top of the league, wasn't I? So um, I think West Brom are going to come good. This is a minor wobble. Look for them to be in the playoffs at the end of the year. Yeah. Yeah, nothing more to say other than the fact that I fear they're coming to Kenilworth Road in a few yep, weeks. Yep, they are. <laughs> Everyone's so coming again, to Kenilworth Road. So again, three points mate. in the bag. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, anyway, that's us done for this week. Who impressed you? Let us know in the comments. Remember, like this video and subscribe to our channel for even more championship content. A big thank you to our host, the Bricklayers Arms in Luton. Wherever you are in the country, come on down to the Brickies. It's right next to the station. Just don't come here on a match day if you're not a Luton fan. You know, long story. It's a Luton Town pub. But check it out. There's some great memorabilia on offer here. As always, a big thank you to our audio partners, Blackstar Amplification and Carry On for making sure that we sound great. And as well, a big thank you to the record shop in Amersham. If you collect vinyl, 
check them out. Mention the OK Football Show. They might give you a discount. Well, they will give you a discount. Just, you know. Just be nice. Be nice. Be nice. And don't complain to us in the comments that they didn't give you a discount. <laughs> but there'll be no show next week because of international break. Wherever you are in the country, have a great day. <laughs>